Good morning, welcome back to the channel for another video. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm on my way to the farm now. And today's video is actually gonna be a little bit different. Um, I think Nick's busy, um, so, but our agronomist is coming out and he's going to be doing like his normal routine work for this time of year here in the fields. Um, it's the end of June, July, I think last day of June today. Years flying by, but anyway, um, Nick, you know, he has a baseline level of knowledge with the science behind the farming. He went to school, he's educated on some of this, but I have absolutely no background, no history with any of this, you know. So I'm actually just gonna tag along with him and learn. That's my goal for today. So um, maybe you know everything about farming and you won't learn a thing in this video, but I will be surprised if you watch it through if you don't learn something. So here with Spencer, um, works with Central, the agronomist, they do all the crop consulting out here at the farm, and what are we gonna do today? Uh, today mainly we're just going out there and Nick's gotta do a second pass on his beans, and overall we just gotta see how far along the beans are, when we gotta time the second pass, and you know we gotta check for volunteer corn, whether or not he missed any, there's stuff that just didn't die from it. Basically, we're just going to do an overview of the field that way for Nick's second pass. We know what's going on and we know what to put in the tank and that's basically it. So it sounds like checking on crop progress and then figuring out exactly what recipe we're going to spray yeah. here. So like I said earlier, it's the end of June. Um, what do you think? Like later next week would start spraying? Yeah, based on Nick planted a little bit later, his beans are a little slower, but it's you're coming along nice and yeah the perfect timing is going to be spray them let the weeds kind of curl up and die and then hopefully the beans canopy shortly after so sure it's more than looking yeah late next week the following early the following week's probably going to be the timing for it and nick's got enough time and sprayers big enough that he can get a lot done in two days he's learned so it's sure so a lot, take long. a lot of the guys that are spraying right now or that are already done with that second pass they're they're planting they're interceding probably those beans that are way closer you know yeah. row spacing yeah if you got 15 inch rows you know most right. of those guys had to yeah most of them are just wrapping up their second pass already for the fact that yeah they're canopying already nick's got 30 inch rows takes a little bit longer and yeah that's just yeah everyone's at a different place you know different time frame right now and right everyone's in the same boat though all right well we'll pick it back up when we get out to the field So we're here at Dad's North and we've got this spot where there's a bunch of volunteer corn right in this strip, but it's weird because you got volunteer corn 20 feet away that's dead and you got volunteer corn 10 feet away this way that's clearly dying. So I don't know what happened in this little strip. It's like there's just like a, a skip with a sprayer. Somehow this might not have got sprayed. You can see like some of the broad leaves even are plenty tall um, so Spencer's gonna show me basically there's a way you can come out here and look at this volunteer corn and um, you can tell if it's actually been sprayed and dying versus it's gonna keep growing so yeah so most of the time you can just easily walk out here and the best way to tell and some of the corn killer and some, when it gets this tall it takes a while to die but the best way to tell is you just reach in you literally pull the whirl out and when it's dying this whole area right here will be brown and rotten looking and dead and we can find another plant somewhere else i don't see any around here but when it's yeah when it's dying you'll look right here right where the new leaves are coming and all that it'll be just pitch brown and that's usually the best sign that yeah the chemicals working the corn's dying it just takes time to really work throughout the whole plant and eventually yeah, the corn should just tip over and die but it just takes time but yeah obviously this area it's been Something happened where, yeah, it either just didn't get sprayed or the corn was too tall and there wasn't a high enough rate or you never know, just something happened in the tank mix and the nozzles might have plugged up for two seconds quick and Nick's going and could be anything. But yeah, if you want to look at the beans right now, if anything stage-wise, you know, the first flowers there are one. Once we get up to R3-ish area, you start applying your fungicides and 
Fungicides can overall in increase your plant health and sometimes you get a yield bump off of that. And It's all depending on what the year looks like. The beans don't look as well, sometimes we don't apply it. If the beans look really good, you can apply it. I'd say Nick and them, they've applied it for many years, so I got a feeling we'll be putting on over the top when time comes. So we're at the home field here and there's just this weird strip, like the width of the booms and how, I don't know, was it a hundred yards long or something? Yeah, I'd say. Something like that, but the beans are, I mean, they're dying, right? Or stunted? They got, yeah, they got some chemical drift or just, you know, what it, something was been in the tank that contaminated a little bit and it's odd that it was right here. I could understand if it was after a fresh cleaning of the tank or right. something like that, or just something got put in there, but it's just for a little bit, but you can tell that it's definitely on the outside of the booms and that the center wasn't as bad because yeah, there's a green strip going right down the center of it that looks like it wasn't even cut. Right, like these rows don't look as bad, right in the, that yep. we're right under the sprayer. Yep. And then it, everything else, it's like definitely got hit with something, but it's weird because we started spraying way over by the house and this would have been like the third third or fourth tank of bean spray so it's just i don't know i don't think we'll ever figure out exactly what happened but it's like i don't know if we me messed up on the mixture a little bit for this yeah, and it, it hit it been, for it a little bit or something but just this weird little strip that yeah yeah, it could have been just a little bit tank cleaner or something like that. It was just caught up somewhere and it broke free and went through. It doesn't take much. Beans are kind of sensitive to that. And these beans, they're not going to die. I mean, they're they're green. You see the brown leaves and stuff, but it's they'll come out of it. And who knows, you know, beans, we always say the beans are made in July or August or whatever. So it's get some rain and that, they'll come out of it. They might look a little stunted, but, you know, short plants can still put on a lot of pods. And, yeah, they might not be as tall, but they still get bushy and... It'll be interesting to see. We'll definitely have to watch this fall and see what it looks like. Yeah, I mean, there's just like a normal run and then two rows away, these things are <laughs> four or five inches high and don't look great, but like you said, it's not over till it's over, I guess. So it's like they're maybe not stunted in as far as what stage they're in. It's yeah. literally just, they're just showing. Kind of their appearance and yeah, if you if it was a bad chemical issue, they'd be fried to the ground dead. I've seen that a little bit this year where it's they got drifted on per se, but this obviously wasn't a drifting issue. This was just a tank contamination of some sort, and it, whatever it was was just a little bit because it worked its way out of the system as it went down. Right, yeah, it's like... You can see right to the line where Nick would have started right over there off the makeshift headland, but... Right, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, you know that for sure, on probably like that fourth tank fill or whatever, mm -hmm. he started right there where this yep. starts. And by the time, you know, he gets up here, it's kind of worked its way out and just up there, it looks perfectly normal, so. Hmm. One of those things, I don't know. Like I said, I doubt we'll ever put our finger on exactly what happened, but. Yeah, you oh, could yeah. kind of guess what chemical or what might have caused it, but I would in just, the end, you'll never. Yeah. I'm just thankful it's not this whole, you know, 83 mm -hmm. gallons that he sprayed out of that load because that's, what is that? I think he's spraying, or no, he can do 83 gallons. 80, so 83 right. acres yep. out of that thousand gallon tank. So um, that'd be a lot worse issue if this whole field was stunted like that. So just pulled a plant. I mean, as far as the root depth, what do you see this year? So we've had a relatively, I would say a wet spring compared to mm -hmm. last year. I mean, I think this particular field has had like 10 inches of rain in, since April, let's say. Yep. That's that's decent. Um, you know, does that does that mean the roots are gonna be shallow or do they uh, look pretty normal or? For right now, you know, when you just pull out the ground, you break a bunch off, there's a lot more probably the root system, but the main roots that go straight down, you know, for now it's, you know when it's super dry they've they've said when they go 
you can go digging out in the field to put tile down or whatever you'll see the roots go down five six feet damn near it's just really it, they go so low looking for moisture and they're pretty resilient on looking for water and i'd say right now it's like you know they're the roots for beans aren't as big of an issue corn you want the roots to be you know a lot more stable for the fact that wind can knock it over so easy beans they don't tip over as easy just because they're bushier so much smaller to the ground and roots i wouldn't say is a big of an issue roots for around here the biggest problem for root issue is actually going to be nematode problems that i get and nick called me the other day one or two but you know for him he doesn't really have any you know he's most of these are just the nodules for uh nitrogen fixation but for the most part yeah he's roots on these beans i'd say they're fine it's beans look good roots look good you know we're coming along basically yeah we're just in the flowering stage now and once we get through that you'll start seeing the pods be put on and yeah, mostly gotta worry about fungicide and we'll look for bugs in the next couple weeks for aphid spraying that's gonna be the next big thing there were a couple years where we didn't have to spray for some odd reason and then the next year they just hit so hard that some guys are spraying twice just once they hit that threshold they just go and yeah they can wreak havoc on a field real fast and crazy what can happen yeah we'll bounce over there's corn here what a couple hundred yards away we'll bounce over to our cornfield and pull up a plant there and just kind of talk about what you see in the roots with that mm -hmm. like i said again a lot of rain here and let's we'll just see how that i was i'm curious to see how that impacts you know versus a dry basically yep. a dry spring so well that might be pretty impossible but All right, so for one thing too that we kind of look for, and it's not so much a problem right now for Nick because he doesn't have a lot of he doesn't have well he doesn't have any corn on corn, but we're seeing a lot of corn rootworm beetle feeding on roots. So basically, when I pull that out, I tore a bunch of the roots off already. But you'll see on the end of these roots there'll be a bunch of feeding, and the larva is pretty small. It's a little grub, but it's tiny. But yeah, they'll chew on the roots and they'll take off your brace roots, which are up here, which our big thing for us because it's always windy here besides today but it's yeah. like yeah you get a big storm that comes through with hail and wind and yeah it'll without these roots you know when the rootworm feeding does they'll, they'll eat it so bad that that wind comes through and you'll see the corn flat on its face and yeah it's like yeah they naturally they go in the ground lay their eggs eggs hatch they feed on the roots but the adults come out they they'll come out and they'll come up to the top of the plant they'll feed on the tassel eating that but mostly we're concerned of is they'll go down to the silks on the corn when it first comes out and they'll eat the silks completely down well if you don't have the tassels out to pollinate the silks most of the time it's yeah that corn plant's lost because there just won't be any ears of corn those be yeah there'll be no kernels that get pollinated on that and then you're kind of sol and so do we spray for that or how do you what what's like the i guess fix for this like that problem if you have it uh you know there's you can spray for them the, but it, the problem is that if they're in this field and there's corn across the road they're going to be in the neighbor's field per se too it's just they're really hard to control and the best thing is just to rotate you know what we're doing now is just keep rotating from corn to beans some guys don't have a choice you know if you got cattle and stuff like that it's you gotta have corn and corn for feed and right. that's kind of where you get in the unfortunate situations where yeah it's not a lot you can do about it you gotta have the corn and corn but yeah the best thing to do is just keep rotating and you can spray but and again it's they come out of the ground at so many different times throughout the year that they could be coming out right now they could be bad you could spray i think you got them all and two weeks later there could be a bunch more of that hatch and come up that yeah you got the same problem again it's not gonna make a difference and you're just in the same boat yeah that'll be uh interesting here this next year because i know nick's talking about it we've got a ton of these fields where it's 300 acres mm -hmm. consecutive or 500 acres these big fields which is not common around here yep. but all around this home place and we have these weird lines where you know yeah, corn bean lines that they're basically imaginary you yep. know lines and nick really wants to explore yep just continue it all the you way know through. one year where we do like a corn on corn and yep. you get those get all these lines all the way out it 
you know, it makes spraying easier. It makes mm -hmm. planting easy. It basically makes everything easier, but then you do have that one year where it's going to be like, you're going to have corn on corn. Yeah. Right. So I think it's, I know definitely more conversation that we're going to have with you and your dad and mm -hmm. stuff as, as we think about this, but it makes sense that we'll just have to watch for, like you said, common issues when you do corn on corn. Yep. So and for Nick, it, yeah, maybe one year corn and corn, that's not probably going to hurt nothing. It's the guys that do it repetitively year after year where, you know, they might do corn right. and corn for 10 years for all you know. It's yeah, he'll not, I don't, he'll never do that. I no. think he'll always keep the rotation. No. Um, yeah. But he'll just have an, yeah, like he, one year he of talked it. about too, it's going to be more so, yeah, you're going to have a lot more corn one year maybe just for the fact that just to get into that rotation, like you said, it's going to be. Right. Yeah, you know, he could take these three fields here, make them all corn next year, but you're still going to have to keep that rotation over there. Yeah, otherwise he's right. going to have. Well, that's the other thing is like some of these, if we do the corn on corn, you might have one year where he's farming 1500 acres of corn and 300 <laughs> acres of beans. Well, yep. with just him by himself and me working very part time, It'll you know, between forever. my job, It'll take forever to get it out. Yeah. And... It's going to take him like two months to get the corn yeah, out at that rate. Manpower. So yeah, unless he's, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he needs to start having kids soon. <laughs> that way he's got a workforce, but yeah so the next thing that we're doing after nick's brain basically is we're going to figure out when we're going to apply the fungicide uh, most of the time we're going to be waiting for the flowering stage that's we're in the early flowering stage that'll be coming up in the next couple weeks usually that's middle of july right after the fourth and yeah so we're right around the corner for that and as soon as that's done it's aphids and aphids are kind of a pain in the ass to look for they're tiny they're all over the place you know, there can be such thing as a hot spot where they're really bad in one area, not so bad in the rest. And yeah, that's kind of a fun time to drive around though, because the only way to really do that's by planes and everyone kind of likes watching the planes fly around and check all that out. But yeah, and you know, basically after that, it's like fall hits and we just kind of wait for the crop to mature. You know, you can do, we can do yield testing, you know, just guessing to see what it is, but we can never be a hundred percent sure. It's, you know, there's mathematical figures that you can, check out to kind of take a rough estimate of what you want to do but yeah until the combine really goes through there's no way to get an exact number on what it's what it's going to be you know we can give you a range but yeah the best thing to do now is basically just wait it's a waiting game as soon as once nick's done spraying we just wait see what happens and make a lot more decisions after that yeah you guys i know you've heard i've heard you guys talk about the importance of rains at different times depending on bean and beans versus corn mm -hmm. i think your dad said like around here if you can catch a good july rain mm -hmm. and get that corn you know yep. going through july with rain yep. most of the time it can weather it out and like do really good through a dry august yeah. even yeah usually right around now in the middle of july it's like this is when the corn starts growing you know it's growing so fast right now it's just rapid growing unbelievable really once you get farther along you know there's a certain stage in the corn that if we catch a rain at the right time where it's not stressed out that's when you really start to see it put on the ears and you know that sometimes it'll determine the amount of rows you get around how many kernels long it's going to go you know just the perfect right. rain can do a lot right and then as far as beans it sounds like you have to get those august rains yeah. if you want good beans late rains for beans are really well we've seen that in the past couple of years where it yeah rain late and it's like that can change a bean from being two feet tall to four feet tall and just the amount of pods you see is just un you know it's unbelievable what a late rain can do it just right everyone benefits it from it so yeah so right now i mean it is plenty dry we could take mm -hmm. rain there's no doubt but it's not like anywhere near where we sat last yep. year i mean oh, yeah, last year was horrible so yeah and we got some chances in the forecast coming up it looks like here and there next week a little bit but it's been so spotty i think across a lot of the corn belt states right now it's been really spotty it's all you hear in the market talk is yeah everyone's begging for rain it's right always rain well i mean even field to field like if you talk about our fields out west which is 15 miles out there to here mm -hmm. they've gotten literally maybe half of the rain we've gotten yep. here and if you go further east they've got double you yep. know so it's really spotty but overall like right where we're at by the home place here where most of the acres are probably over a thousand of them yeah, we're I, sitting fine we don't have too much rain we're not you know it's not super dry but any rain you could get mm -hmm. we'll yeah. take we'll take it so yeah i'd say we're in a pretty good spot right now it's like yeah any more rain would definitely benefit us but it's yeah we're not hurting for rain right now we're definitely right. dry but 
Yeah, if you could time it perfect, we would wait, wait, take that, you know, through July, get mm -hmm. it on the corn, get those really good rains in August would be awesome. But we're yeah. about the 4th of July here, and I think just history repeats itself a lot where you, if you get a couple rains between now and September, mm -hmm. you might be oh, yeah, lucky. So yeah, and usually the storms that do come through in July and August are yeah, not the one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it comes with wind. It comes wind with and hail. hail and and it's, yeah, it's never a good storm. It's always going to be yeah. yeah. You're holding your breath and just praying it all turns out. But. Right, dumping seven inches of rain in yep. an hour or two. So, yep. but yeah. So I think I'm going to cruise down. There's an area we're actually going to take out some grass and we're going to. Uh, plant some I think we're gonna do like oats turnips and uh, some rye grass here but we're gonna get that sprayed off soon so I'm gonna zip down there and kind of map out this area I don't think anything's been in that area for ever maybe so mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna make sure there's no rocks and stuff <laughs> like that before we bring the mower and stuff down there the last thing we need to do is run a 400 pound rock through the tractor or something like that so I think I'm gonna head out there I'm down here to this area that we're gonna clear a little of this grass out and put some food for the wildlife in and I gotta be careful down here last year I was down here and I set a stand up um, and I almost stepped on a snake and fun fact that you guys don't know about me I hate snakes every kind of snake I don't care if it's the most harmless little snake in the world or a anaconda I want nothing to do with it and I don't want to be anywhere near it so I'm going to uh, not look at the ground and kind of go through here and walk through and see what we can figure out for food plot plans. But this grass is a good four to six feet tall and there's a little water, yeah, little drainage here that carries the water down from the field all the way down this ravine. And uh, you don't want to step in that either. I think. Nick nearly broke his neck stepping in that uh, this spring earlier. So we'll see if I can jump over this successfully on camera. If not, you're going to see me break my leg. Oh, barely. So, all right. So I, set, I pulled out my phone and uh, started a tracker here and just kind of walked the perimeter. And I don't know if you can see that very well. There we go. It's just a small little area but it's like a half acre and you know grass this isn't providing any sort of nutritional value or anything like that so I think it's one of those situations where I just take a little bit of this grass out and provide something better still plenty of cover we're on the border of some of the only pine trees you'll find within miles in this country but uh that's good so I think I'm gonna go get the sprayer set up here very soon because I probably need to get this uh, treated sooner than later. Oop, about fell in that crick that I told told you Nick almost did last or this spring. So anyway, get this treated and um, should be sitting pretty good here in three four weeks. We'll try to time planting with some rain, but I guess if we don't get any rain, we can't really do much about it. But Eventually we'll be able to put something in there whether the initial plan works out or not. Worst case scenario, you can always wait until almost early September and you could still get rye and oats to do something. So hopefully you enjoyed the segment with Spencer from Central, kind of going through things. If, you're, if you are a farmer or been around farming at all, you probably knew everything we talked about, but for me, I learned a ton. Um, like I said, my knowledge level on that stuff is is almost none. So I got to ask him a bunch of questions and just really get an understanding of what they're looking for as far as the crop production and itself, and then also weeds. It seems to be a really big area of focus is making sure that the fields are clean and there's not a bunch of weeds. Of course, weeds, they look bad, um, but also can rob precious moisture in areas that are very dry. So as well as, I mean, if you don't manage your weeds, they just, it's like a compounding effect. They just keep getting worse and worse. So um, yeah, 
So I appreciate you watching the video today. If you like the video, like, make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with everything we do on a weekly basis. We usually put out two, three videos. And if you have anything to say, drop us a comment. Thanks for watching.